Village Green English. Everyday British English, British English every day. You're listening to the Curiosity Contest. I am Nathan, and with me is Tom. We are English teachers and the two founders of Village Green English. Every week, we are recording a podcast to find out which word of the week is better. I will argue for my word of the week, and likewise, Tom will argue for his word of the week. Ultimately, this is a matter of opinion, and the winner will be decided by your vote in the poll. V rules. So, Tom, what are the rules? Well, Nathan, I'm glad you are. <laughs> Every week, we choose a word pertaining to a topic which will be the subject of contentious debate in the podcast. The reward, a spot in the Virtual Village Museum of Lexical Curiosity. A thing must be chosen in relation to the word to symbolise the word and its journey through common language. The words and their representative artefacts will then be put forward to the community to cast their vote on their chosen victor. My word of the week. So I chose my word this week because I've recently been watching the Australian Open. Now, as a big tennis fan, the Australian Open is a pretty big event. Uh, happens each year, one of the Grand Slam tournaments. And uh, this year, it was won by a certain Rafael Nadal. Did you uh, did you watch the tennis? Um, I did watch the preamble, the um, the Australian government versus a certain uh, <laughs> illustrious champion. Um, so that was a bit of a tennis match. That was a bit of back and forth and a bit of the balls in your court. Um, but yes, I did. I did catch some of the tournament, um, and I was very glad to see Rafa, you know, break through that new record, isn't it? Twenty, twenty something. That's right. Twenty one <laughs> Grand Slam victory, first man in history to do so. Um, and it's interesting that you mentioned uh, Novak, because. Novak, uh, Djokovic, Roger Federer, and Rafa Nadal were all previously tied on 20 Grand Slam victories yeah. each. And now Rafa Nadal has pushed himself to 21 and has suggested that he will continue okay. and is looking to get his 22nd. Uh, how are you spelling racket? Uh, R A C K E T. Now, when I think of racket okay. in the terms of tennis, I would spell that R-A-C-Q-U-E-T. So, is your word is that is that mm-hmm. yeah, this is correct. combining the two, or are you is this breaking the rules, Tom? Or what are the rules? Can we have deviant spellings? <laughs> to be fair, Nathan, I think you need rules in order for rules to be broken. So, I don't think we're breaking any rules here. <laughs> Um, so the word is racket, spelled R-A-C-K-E-T. Now, R-A-C-Q-U-E-T is a word, but it's more of an alternative spelling mm. to racket. I'm not sure the French would, would be happy with you saying that. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it's not their language. <laughs> or perhaps fortunately, it's not their language. It's ours. Well, it's everyone's and no one's. Um, It is, it is everyone's, and it is definitely no one's. Um, that is true. But the word racket with a Q would um, specify yeah. a racket as in a tennis racket. But racket with a CK is both that kind of racket, but also has another couple of meanings. My artifact. My artifact is a tennis racket. No. But Surprise. not just any tennis racket but this tennis racket was used so it's a donne racket and it was used mm. by bjorn ball oh right when he was 17 uh no not when he was 17 so in 1991 april the 22nd bjorn borg tried or rather he did make a comeback to tennis so <laughs> this was over a decade after he'd last played. It was certainly an attempt. It was certainly but an attempt. perhaps successful. And what Bjorn Borg did was he um, he didn't hire a new coach. 
his coach was actually a um, martial artist hmm. at the time. He also okay. turned up to the Monte Carlo um, Open with his original tennis racket. And this is the tennis racket, his Donne tennis racket. So at this time in 1991, um, tennis players had moved on to graphite tennis rackets. Right. And the technology had completely advanced. And actually, the play style had completely changed by then. So Bjorn Borg made his comeback, and he didn't win a single game. Mm. So Bjorn Borg... It's like a Malcolm Gladwell story. Mm. So Bjorn Borg, possibly one of the best possibly the best tennis player there's ever been had an amazing career wow. had his huge rivalry with john mcenroe hmm. picked up his trusty donny tennis racket tried to make a comeback and couldn't win a single game and that's why i'd like to put his tennis racket into our Just... museum of just with that, like pure stubbornness of a sportsman. Yeah, I think the his expectation that he could be competitive. It's like turning up to um, World War One with a bow and arrow. <laughs> okay, I didn't know we, we were going to go there, but okay. <laughs> Maybe yeah, not the best uh, analogy. Um, but... Yeah, it's a bit like Michael Jordan having to go at baseball. I guess. Oh yeah. <laughs> But of course, his comeback was extremely successful. Mm. Um, yeah, it makes me think of cricket, how the bats can only ever be made of one type of wood, which is willow. Is that true? Yeah, it's enshrined wow. in the laws. And cricket's not a game of rules. It's a game of laws. Right. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, some guy tried to play with an aluminum bat in, <laughs> well, I think he was a uh, Australian. But, yeah, I imagine then, that would make they, a They introduced a new sub-law to say a cricket yeah. bat must be this dimension, must be made of this material to make sure no one gets an unfair advantage. Well, that... That does remind me of a story I heard of a tennis player, uh, sorry, a cricket player who, um, in reading the laws, found that there was no restriction on the width of the bat. And so he brought a bat that was wider than the stumps. <laughs> Have you heard about this? <laughs> well, that's just good, good legal um, reading, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I've just found a picture of it. <laughs> Uh, yes, it's fantastic. <laughs> oh, I want that as my artifact. That is so good. It's good, right? My word of the week. We are actually recording right now the pilot podcast. So, in this sense, we're actually very much living up to the, this this word. Um, but the actual reason I thought of it was when I visited Tom, I made a long voyage uh, all the way across the Solent, which is a stretch of, of water between Southampton and the <laughs> vagabond Isle of Wight. And, and to do so, you must get a boat. There is no uh, land bridge. So in order to do that, you actually must rely on the expertise of a pilot to, to guide you across the the rolling waves and onto the the white chalk cliffs and into the, the safety of the harbour of West Cows. <laughs> it's actually very And how nice. was the crossing? It's a very nice ferry. What I wasn't expecting was the TVs and um just very nice plush seats on the the red ferry, whatever it's called. The Red Dragon. The Red Funnel. It, uh, yeah, it has its moments. Um, <laughs> I, know, I, I really enjoyed it. I just wish that I could have gone on the, what do you call it, the bow? What do you call it? Yeah, the bow yeah. is the very front of but the ship. Uh, just because it's winter, they don't open that. But it seems like you could in, the, in, in pleasant weather. Um, 
Yeah, yeah you are that, permitted on the top deck, yeah. as they call it. <laughs> Um, we'll, we'll come back to the bow later because that brings me to my artifact. My artifact. Um, so my artifact is actually a completely huh? different use of, of, of the word. But again, you can see the similarities. So <laughs> a pilot is often used in railroading to refer to the very front of a locomotive. So a what would you call it? A rail, rail uh, train. Yeah. In common parlance, a train. But this is more to do with like your steam type yeah, uh, trains that um, would have these big metal grills mm -hmm. on the front, sort of like a V shape, inverse V. And what they did was they just yep. removed things off the tracks. Because obviously, you know, you couldn't maintain hundreds of miles of track at any one time um but yeah so the artifact i'm putting forward is actually it's quite, it's an interesting story so uh thomas edison there's a bizarre fact that he nearly he got into a near-death experience when he was sitting on a pilot at the front of a locomotive um and he almost got hit by a badger when they were making a sort of cross-country trip. Um, and I can read you a bit of an, of an excerpt. So... Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. So by this time, Thomas Edison was already a celebrity. He'd already, um, I think he was already established at Menlo Park. Um, you know, as this entrepreneur, electricity guru, sort of the, the 19th century Elon Musk. I think this story sort of he sort of comes out as. Um, mm -hmm. Here we go. Um, yeah. The inventor turned celebrity received a perk from the railroad, a special pass that permitted him and his party to ride on the locomotive, or else they may desire. Edison's desire often was to perch on the engine's prow. He lounged on the cow catcher, which is the pilot on a cushion provided by the engineer, propelled forward by iron and coal and steam as he took in the scenery, without dust or anything else to obstruct the view, as he put it. Nebraska displayed a vast, subtly shifting panorama, cloud shadows on the broad plains, the lazy Platte River, clumps of cottonwoods, prairie dog towns, cattle, where bison recently had roamed. The hypnotic passage of the telegraph post that stretched to infinity, Edison found his bliss marred just once when the locomotive struck an animal, a badger. As best he could tell, he grasped the angle brace and hung on tight as the train battered the creature into the air. So it's a nice little, it's really well written. What a story. Um, um, <laughs> it is, it's a lovely, lovely piece of journalism, I guess. So yeah, the, the artifacts for pilot uh, that I'd like to put forward is the exact cow catcher pilot that Thomas Edison sat on for that exact trip that hit that badger. I love it. Thomas Edison nearly killed by a badger. <laughs> it's a good story. It's a great story. Um, yeah, I don't think I would want to sit on the front, on the very front of a train. Um, at any point. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Thanks for listening. Please do follow the link to the website where you can vote for the winner of this week's Curiosity Contest. You can also find extra materials for this episode and a whole lot more. On the website, you will be able to sign up for lessons with me or Nathan, and that includes small group classes, private tuition, and our courses. Also, Join the Discord community for topical discussions, games, and social events. Village Green English. Everyday British English. British English every day.